For most of 2021, the world has been fighting off various COVID variants, which are all more efficient than the OG from Wuhan. We had Alpha, we had Lambda, we had Delta. You know, COVID basically turned the planet into the shittiest frat house of all time. But just when we thought we had it all figured out, last week, scientists in South Africa announced that they discovered a new variant. And what they saw is freaking people out. Scientists are racing to learn more about a new COVID variant already setting off alarm bells around the world. According to South African scientists, the Omicron variant has more than 50 mutations and is likely to be more transmissible. It has a bunch of mutations, a disturbingly large number of mutations in the spike protein, which is the business end of the virus. The COVID-19 vaccines target the spike protein. If the spike changes too much and in the wrong way, it could make the vaccines less effective. The president of Moderna said yesterday, what's most scary about this virus is it has managed to put all of its greatest hits into one variant. Yes, it's all the greatest hits in one place. Like if Mamma Mia killed you instead of teaching you about the power of love. And what's so scary about this thing is all the mutations to the virus's spike protein because the spike protein is how the virus penetrates our cells. It's basically COVID's dick. And a mutated dick is never a good thing. Yeah, there's no Hallmark cards that say, congratulations on your mutated dick. But hey, I'm no expert. So to get us a more informed perspective, I sent Roy Wood Jr. out to CDC headquarters in Atlanta. And Roy, I know you're standing by right now. What can you tell us? Well, Trevor, the Omicron variant is the 12th variant of COVID and the fifth variant of concern now spreading in the 20th month of the global pandemic. I've been talking to the top scientists at the CDC and everyone seems to agree. Come on, man, just, man, just stop. Just stop, man. Chill, man, just variant after variant after variant. Just damn. Uh, Shit got to stop, bro. I, I'm sorry, Roy, this is what the scientists are saying? Oh, no, of course not. Uh, I'm paraphrasing, Trevor. The actual scientific consensus on the Omicron is, ah, shit, F I gotta cancel this damn vacation. I pushed it back two, three times. It's St. John's, I wanna go. Then they gonna shut everything down. Then the next thing you know, you're gonna have strange people delivering your food. And you gotta wonder whether or not they've been eating some of your fridge fries. And then I gotta be cooped up with the boy. And I gotta homeschool and figure out which button is the Zoom button and how to print the homework on the printer that has no ink. And then that's just another whole last day. And then I'm, we're, we're in a two bedroom apartment. It's three of us. It's, it's just not enough space. I can hear her phone calls through the wall. I can hear him playing the Nintendo Switch. I'm trying to be on a conference call and God forbid I actually get a little bit of silence in this house so I can enjoy my PlayStation that I set online for Cyber Monday to buy. I actually got a goddamn PlayStation that I can't even play now because everybody's gonna be in the house because you can't play violent video games around the boy. We don't want him learning about violent. Well, what other good games are there to play on a PlayStation other than violent games? You have to pretend violence in this country to keep from doing violence in real life. And, that, and I think that's what she doesn't understand. She doesn't understand that that's what the video games do for me. And I just think if I just had a, just a third bedroom, a third bedroom. All right. That's all we need is a third bedroom. And that would give me the space that I need. But then we would have to move uptown and that's too far. And then you gotta all right, have a 40 all right. well, minute train ride. Well, thank, thank you, and thank you. A train ride and everybody's got Omicron. All right, thank you so much, Roy. Thank you so much, Roy. Thank you for keeping us updated on, on your developments. Thank you so much for that. No problem, Trevor. Now look. I understand the frustration of facing yet another new variant. I mean, how did that happen after everything we did? I mean, for two years now, people, we wore masks for some of the time. We social distanced when it was convenient. Then like half of us got vaccinated. What more is it gonna take? But at the same time, we shouldn't panic because this variant was just discovered. So there's still a ton that we don't know about it. We don't know how long it's been around. We don't know if it causes more severe illness. We don't know if it can evade our vaccines. We know less about this variant than your grandmother knows about Jojo Siwa. And she just knows she's scared, that's it. And it could very well be that all these mutations that sound so scary turn out to not be that big a deal. You know, like when Apple acts like it's making tons of changes to the iPhone, and then we're like, ah, I need a new iPhone, I need a new iPhone. And then you get it and you're like, wait, it's just a slightly different camera? I killed a man in line for this thing. So right now, 
Basically, all we know about this strain is that it's called Omicron. That's all we know. And even the name of the virus has a complicated story. A World Health Organization panel has just named the strain Omicron and classified it as a variant of concern. The World Health Organization named this variant Omicron instead of the next letters in the Greek alphabet, Nu or G. In a statement to the Associated Press, they said they skipped Nu because it sounds like the word Nu and that G is a common last name. Yes, it's true. G is a very common last name, particularly among Chinese authoritarian leaders. I see you who. And this really shows you the clout that China has, man. Because the World Health Organization is like, oh, we don't want to offend one guy in China. Meanwhile, Greece is over here like, what? You stole our whole alphabet, Malacca. And it has been interesting to see how sensitive the scientific community has become about naming COVID variants, right? Because back in the day, you realize back in the day, nobody cared. Like, nobody cared about naming diseases. Doctors would even name diseases after themselves. I discovered a disease that destroys the mind, making you slowly forget your life and the people that you love. And whenever people get this disease, I want them thinking of your boy, Alzheimer. Yeah, that way they'll never forget me. I mean, they might forget, but yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, it's going to be quite cool. But the good news about them skipping those letters is that that means we're almost halfway to Omega now, which is the last letter of the Greek alphabet. And that means once COVID reaches the end of the alphabet, it can't make any more variants, people. That's just science. We did it, baby. Yeah. Now, the truth is that so far, there are some encouraging signs that Omicron may only be causing mild symptoms in the people who have it. Although experts say it'll take at least a couple of weeks before we really understand what the strain can do. But the world isn't waiting to find out. Governments are moving quickly tonight to limit travel into their countries in an attempt to slow the spread of the new COVID variant called Omicron. Overnight, the United States banned entry for non-citizen travelers from South Africa and seven neighboring countries. At least 44 other countries are also imposing travel restrictions. I took immediate steps to restrict travel from countries in Southern Africa. But while we have that travel restrictions can slow the speed of Omicron, it cannot prevent it. But here's what it does. It gives us time. It gives us time to take more actions, to move quicker, to make sure people understand you have to get your vaccine. You have to get the shot. Yes, if you give America just a couple more weeks, surely all the anti-vaxxers will finally come around and get their shots. Oh, bless your heart, Joe. No, for real. I mean, I understand where the U.S. is coming from on this, right? If you can slow down the spread of Omicron, even a little bit, then you have time to research it. You have time to work on new vaccines and you have time to consult with Joe Rogan on a treatment plan. I mean, hey, maybe this time he'll say vaccines. You don't know. So a lot of people support this travel ban. Although Republicans aren't giving Biden any credit for taking a tough stance. In fact, today, Texas Governor Greg Abbott, he tweeted that while Biden is banning travel from South Africa, He's doing nothing to stop South Africans from crossing the southern border illegally. And you know, Greg Abbott has a very good point here. Every day, millions of South Africans walk across the Atlantic Ocean to cross the border. I mean, why did I book a flight? I could have just hitched a ride. What is this? This is the biggest load of bullshit ever. And, And look, props to the governor of Texas for being able to turn literally any story into a complaint about the border. Everyone's watching Red Notice on Netflix when what they should be doing is watching our southern border. Now, you you guys may not know this about me, but I too am a South African. Relax, relax, everyone in the studio, relax. I do not have the variant, I think. Got the OG one. And as a South African who does not have the variant, I think this travel ban is total bullshit. I really do. I mean, first of all, COVID is a hoax. We can all agree on that, right? (laughs) No, but but for a second of all, Omicron has already been found in over a dozen countries, a dozen countries around the world, right? We don't know where it started. We don't know how long it's been around. It's everywhere from Hong Kong to Israel to Spain. So why aren't you banning travel from all of those countries too? Huh? Only the African countries? What's the difference between the African countries? Oh. I still don't get the logic. What, you think Omicron is is gonna get to Europe and then just decide to stay there. I was going to spread to America, but I simply cannot leave the beauty of Barcelona. 
And look, I mean, maybe America is buying itself a couple of weeks before it gets overrun with Omicron, but don't forget, don't forget about the costs of this action too. Because you do realize that other countries are paying attention and they realize that if they're gonna get punished for telling the world about new variants, they're gonna stop telling the world whenever their scientists discover new variants. I'm just saying, don't be surprised when the next variant pops up in Europe and Italian scientists come out acting like nothing is wrong. Everything is a fine. This is a just a, how you say, a TikTok challenge. But that's where we are right now. There's a new coronavirus that we don't know anything about. And because of that, I can't go home to my uncle's baby shower. And man, I really wanted to go. You don't see your uncle get showered by babies much. As of now, it looks like it's gonna still be a couple of weeks before we know more about the Omicron strain. Things like, does it spread faster? Does it make you sicker? And is it available as an NFT? But over in MAGA world, oh, they, they seem to already have figured it all out. The emergence of the new COVID variant is sparking a fresh round of conspiracy theories. Former White House doctor turned MAGA Congressman Ronnie Jackson tweeted, quote, here comes the MEV the midterm election variant. They need a reason to push unsolicited nationwide mail-in ballots. Democrats will do anything to cheat during election, but we're not going to let them. It defies logic, and listen here, um, unfortunately, it's not just Ronnie Jackson. If it was just Congressman Jackson or Dr. Jackson, we could call him out, but he's getting help on uh, you know where. It's always yeah. a new variant. And you can always, you'll count on a variant about every October, every yeah. two years. <laughs> oh, I think it's gonna, yep. You, you know, know, you're uh, probably right. I mean, it, however, they, they could speed up. Uh, the variants <laughs> could come more quickly. Uh, and the we're going to need a new uh, variant here. Yes. <laughs> My Fear. gosh. Okay, okay, just so, I, just so I've got this straight. According to this conspiracy, the Democrats' big plan is to intentionally never solve the one problem that is ruining everyone's life? That is such a dumbass strategy to win an election. Which makes me think maybe the Democrats actually did come up with it. Aha! I mean, you realize for this to be true, the Democrats would have had to coordinate on this lie with the World Health Organization and South African scientists and governments across Europe. You serious people? You know the Democrats can't coordinate shit. The only thing Democrats can coordinate is their kente cloths. And it's bad enough to hear this from a congressman, but what's crazy is that before he was in Congress, people forget Ronnie Jackson was the president's doctor, the president's Doctor, and not just Trump's doctor, by the way, Obama's doctor too. Yeah, that guy. This just shows you how bad America's healthcare system. Even the president was like, uh, you're telling me that uh, he's the only doctor in my network? I mean, seriously, it's amazing that Obama and Trump actually survived. One of them sneezes and Ronnie Jackson is like, you've got to realign your electrons quick, swallow as many magnets as possible. And by the way, of all the shows, how does Fox and Friends not understand what new variants are? Every four months, Fox and Friends has two totally different dudes and one new woman saying the same bullshit from the same couch. I mean, if that isn't a new variant, I don't know what is. Hey, but whatever, man. I guess the Democrats, in coordination with scientists in South Africa, Europe, Israel, all over, are simply pretending there's a new corona variant out there. That's what they're doing. Yeah, and they're not only doing it to justify mail-in voting. No, no, no. It's also because they're really horny for lockdowns. Judge, if they keep testing for different strains of coronavirus, we're gonna be locked down for the rest of our existence. Mm. I am, uh, you know, I had cancer. My oncologist is a specialist in bone cancer. And he, you know, every oncologist who deals with bone cancer identifies hundreds of coronaviruses inside of our bones. They've created a problem that can never actually be solved. So they can justify whatever it is they want to do. I'm sorry, what? Your bones are riddled with coronavirus? Quick, lady, you need to swallow these magnets. Now, what I think Laura Logan was saying there is that we'll never stop finding new coronavirus variants when they test us because our bones are full of them. And, and look, this sounded uh, wrong to me, but I'm not a bone doctor. I mean, I am, but... So we called a top oncologist just to make sure that we were right and... We were like, hey, weird question, but if you crack open a bone, do hundreds of coronaviruses fly out? And she was like, no. And also, why is everyone asking me this question today? So no, people, bones are not filled with coronaviruses, all right? They're filled with milk. Can we call her back and ask what bones are filled with? 
But according to Fox, now Democrats are going to force everyone into endless lockdowns. That's the plan. And the worst part is if Trump was still in office, this variant, which doesn't even exist, would already be defeated. COVID is becoming endemic. It is gonna continue to mutate. It's gonna continue to evolve. It's all around planet Earth. If President Trump was still in office, by the way, we'd already have modified vaccines to deal with the new variants, which is a great point. Okay, first of all, Stephen Miller, if President Trump was still in office, if someone's not a true believer, JFK Jr. will be so disappointed when he hears about this one. I mean, the idea that Donald Trump would have quickly handled a COVID variant is by far the least believable shit I have ever heard. You're gonna act like we all don't know this man? There's no way he would have handled it. First of all, he would have spent four months denying there was even a new variant. And then he would have wasted six more months saying that the vaccines were on their way, but then also don't worry about it because it's not gonna hurt anybody, but also the vaccines are coming. And then he would have gotten Omicron himself. And then he would have been like, Omicron is real, folks, totally real. And I beat it. I karate chopped it so hard, I destroyed it. And now it cried, it cried to me. It said, Trump, why you did this to me? You beat me so hard. And I beat it, so now it's over. Congratulations to all, even the haters and the losers. I mean, you can't have a vaccine for a new variant a few days after you discover the variant, people. It's impossible. The only way you could do that is if you had a time machine. And we all know if Trump had a time machine, he wouldn't use it for that. Like he'd go back in time to hang baby Mike Pence. I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. He'd probably use it to warn himself not to have that affair with Stormy Daniels but then he'd get too horny and end up having a threesome with himself and Stormy Daniels. This is so great. There are fine people on both sides. Very fine people. Now look, anyone whose brain hasn't been rotted from Fox and Facebook knows that everything these people are saying is bullshit. Omicron is a real variant with real mutations and real spikes on its real proteins. And shit, that's how it works. Democrats, are just trying to keep the pandemic going to stay in power. And the best way you can tell that is that a year ago, MAGA world was pushing the exact opposite conspiracy. If it ends up that Biden wins in November, I guarantee you the week after the election, suddenly all those Democratic governors, all those Democratic mayors will say, everything's magically better. Go back to work, go back to school. Suddenly the problems are solved. They'll milk it every single day between now and November 3rd. And guess what, after November 3rd, coronavirus will magically all of a sudden go away and disappear and everybody will be able to reopen. That's all I hear, turn on television, right? COVID, 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 COVID. By the way, on November 4th, you won't hear about it anymore. It's true. COVID! 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 <laughs> COVID! <laughs> this dude was president and he's gonna be president again. Ah. <laughs> uh. Now, to be fair, to be fair, for a while after the election, we did hear less about COVID, mostly because the news was about Donald Trump trying to overthrow the country. But this really shows you how drastically MAGA people have changed their conspiracies about COVID over time. I mean, you might even say they had to mutate their propaganda so that it could keep spreading in a new environment. I wonder if there's a medical parallel to the way these talking points are adapting over time. No. <music> Abortion has been a constitutional right in the United States ever since the Supreme Court decided Roe v. Wade nearly half a century ago. But based on what happened at the Supreme Court today, it seems like it won't be a right for much longer. Fox News alert, oral arguments in a landmark abortion case wrapping up at the Supreme Court after nearly two hours. The hearing setting up a decision by the high court now with a six to three conservative majority that could change abortion laws across the country. Hundreds of protesters from both sides of the issue gathered outside of the Supreme Court. The stakes could not be higher. Roe versus Wade is on the line as the justices consider a law from Mississippi that would ban almost all abortions after 15 weeks of pregnancy. After today arguments over abortion, it appears abortion rights in America, as they stand right now, are in grave danger. After two hours of questioning, the general consensus among legal experts is that there are at least five votes to uphold Mississippi's ban on abortion after 15 weeks of pregnancy. 
and possibly as many votes to overturn a federal right to an abortion altogether. Oh boy. Based on the oral arguments in the Supreme Court today, it looks very likely that Roe v. Wade will soon be overturned. And you know, when you think about it, it is wild. It's wild for the United States to take such a step backwards in women's rights. It's almost like the U.S. invaded Afghanistan to defeat the Taliban and then came back to the U.S. like, actually, those guys have some pretty good ideas. And now the truth is, the truth is that this is the culmination of a 50-year plan for the conservative movement to reshape the courts for this very purpose. And say what you want about it. But you gotta admit, man, the conservative movement is just that dedicated to protecting life. I mean, not protecting life from coronavirus or, or school shootings or from a lack of healthcare or climate change or poverty or homelessness or... And I know, I know, I know there are guys out there right now who are saying, well, you know what, tough luck, ladies, but this doesn't affect me. Well, first of all, you're gonna see it affect your bank account when you're paying child support for 18 years. And secondly, you guys clearly don't see what's happening here. Yeah, because first, first they said a baby is only a baby when it comes out of the vagina. Then they said it's a baby when it's viable outside of the womb, right? Now you've got people arguing that if there's any electrical signal, it counts as a heartbeat. You realize what's coming up next, right? At some point, they're gonna be like, okay, we decided that sperm is babies, so you can't jack off anymore. You'll be like, what? But what if I have a wet dream? Then your ass is going to jail. Yeah, now you're in your dreams trying to get your high school teacher to put her shirt back on. No, Mrs. Patterson, please, please, I can't do hard time. Please get dressed. I'm kidding, of course, I'm kidding. Obviously, nobody's ever gonna regulate what men can do with their bodies. Calm down, everybody. Now look, we don't know for sure what the ruling will be yet, and we won't find out until next year, but you can tell a lot about where the justices stand based on what kind of arguments they made. For example, Justice Brett Kavanaugh, Trump appointee and guy at the bar who insists he's totally fine to drive. Well, he emphasized the view that overturning the right to abortion would actually be the neutral position because it is neither pro-life nor pro-choice, but simply leaves the issue up to the states. And I have to admit, guys, that argument actually makes a lot of sense. Like, why should there be one abortion law for the entire country? I mean, people in Alabama and people in California have very different views on this, so maybe it should be different in different states. Although, when you think about it, there are also differences in different parts of each state, so really, the law should be, like, by county, you know what I mean? That would be better. They should say, like, red counties in a blue state can ban abortion, but blue counties in a red state can allow abortion. I mean, that, that seems fair, right? Yeah, it's up to the states, but make it up to the counties. Well, except actually sometimes you have urban and rural areas sharing a county, so maybe it should be at the level of the city or the town. Yeah, no, wait, what if each house... Oh, yes, each house. Each house could have its own rule. Yeah, this makes sense, right? Because the neighbors, they don't always agree with each other, but in the house, you... Within the house, people have different opinions. You know what? What if each person made their own rule? Like, each person could decide for themselves what they could do with their own... Shit, people, I figured it out. Yo, get me a taxi to the Supreme Court. You know what, get me a taxi to the bar next to the Supreme Court. I wanna tell Justice Kavanaugh something. Yeah, man, this is amazing. Omicron, the worst transformer ever. So it was a car and then it became a virus? Yesterday, the first case was identified right here in the United States, and it didn't take long for the sequel to come out. We do begin this hour with breaking news on the pandemic. The second confirmed case of the Omicron variant in the United States has just been confirmed, this one in Minnesota. We don't know much about the patient yet, except that they had only traveled domestically. Health officials say that the man developed mild symptoms on November 22nd after going to an anime convention in New York City. 53,000 people attended that event between November 19th and the 21st. Well, now the city wants those attendees to get a COVID test immediately, wear face masks and practice social distancing until they get their test results back. That's right. One of the first U.S. cases of the new COVID variant may be an adult man who attended an anime convention. I mean, which is good. At least we know that it's not transmitted via eye contact. No, but I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I love anime, honestly, I do. In fact, when I heard about this, I wondered if the guy got infected in anime style. Oh, 
It's Omicron. Its power is stronger than any other variant I've ever seen. It's got so many spikes. Ah, I should have gotten a booster shot. Oh, if I don't breathe, maybe I can survive. Omaiwa Sudeni Shindaru. But people, please remember this. Please remember this. We shouldn't be surprised when we find more and more cases, okay? Because Omicron is like those microscopic bugs that live in your eyelashes. Even if you don't see them, you know that they're there. Yeah, laughing at you about all the spiders that crawl into your mouth while you sleep. And also don't forget, don't forget this. We have no idea if Omicron is actually that bad. And what I mean by that is we don't know if it might spread more easily or, you know, we don't know if it'll be more deadly. It's, it's just too early to know. And I hate to sound like someone describing every streaming show right now, but you gotta stick with it past the first couple of weeks and see where it goes, you know? But anyway, let's move on from COVID to America's other national pastime, baseball. The only sports you can think about to yourself to stop from orgasming. Yeah, sorry, hockey, you're too sexy. In some ways, being a baseball player is unlike any other job in the world. I mean, for one thing, if your entire office got into a brawl, you wouldn't go back to work five minutes later like nothing happened. But also, being a baseball player is still a job, which means that sometimes they get into disagreements with their bosses. And now, one of those disagreements has shut down the entire league. Breaking news from the world of sports overnight. For the first time in more than 25 years, Major League Baseball is now in a work stoppage. Owners locking out players after months of failed talks toward a new labor contract. The biggest economic issues right now between MLB and the union have to do with when players become free agents and how much they get paid. Players Association uh, wants young stars to get paid sooner and not be restricted to teams for the first six years of their career. Now the lockout freezes all league business until an agreement is reached. That means no trades, no more free agent signings, and no players are allowed inside club facilities. And if you go to MLB.com or your favorite team's website, you're gonna notice all images and videos of players have been completely removed. They took all the players' photos off the MLB website. You know who's feeling great about this right now, yeah? Anyone who collects baseball cards. Well, 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 you guys said there was no reason for me to have a photo of Albert Pujols, but now I'm the only guy who knows what he looks like. Ha ha ha, ha ha ha, ha ha. At the same time though, this is all happening in the off season. So there's plenty of time for them to work out their differences before the season starts. You know, there's like a haunted house owner getting tough with the employees in July. It doesn't really matter. And you know they're gonna work something out because both sides need each other. Like the MLB, they can't go out and hire regular people. We all saw how that turned out with 50 cents. And baseball players, they have no skills that translate to other jobs. Yeah, I'm looking for a position where I can stand around doing nothing for most of the day, but then every 20 minutes, something comes at my head really fast. Yeah, also, I wanna be able to slap anyone's ass whenever I like. Before we go, please consider supporting Choose Love. They work to provide refugees and displaced people with everything from life-saving search and rescue boats to food and even legal advice. At the link below, you can go to the Choose Love store and buy essential emergency items and services for the refugees who need them. Everything, diapers, hot meals, medical services, and so much more. So if you'd like to support Choose Love, then please check out the link below. 